In urban India, access to water and sanitation is widespread. Huge investments are made to build urban infrastructure. But despite such investments, services for the people are poor in many cities. For example, in some cases, water supply infrastructure is late, but household connections are not provided. And where connections are provided, the quantity of water supplied is not adequate. So against such high resource allocation, it is important to track the performance of the water and sanitation services provided by the city through service level benchmarks. Service level benchmarks are performance metrics that are used to measure the access to services, service levels, quality, financial sustainability and efficiency in service operations provided by the city. These help the cities to identify areas of improvement, track progress over time and make informed decisions about resource allocation and service delivery. CWAS has developed an online portal to facilitate collection, validation and analysis of SLB data under the Performance Assessment System PASS project. To access the portal, type www.pass.org.in in the browser. Each city is given a unique login ID and case-sensitive password. Enter your login ID and password at the top right side of the website. Click on Login button to access the portal. The portal is available in four languages. For data reporting, click on Data Entry tab. We will see Checklist and Target Settings sub-tabs. Click on Checklist, which takes us to worksheets for reporting sectoral data. We can either enter data in the worksheets online or download all the sheets. Collect data in the required format and fill in the data in the portal later on. For online data reporting, go to Select Financial Year, for which we want to report the data. Select the Financial Year from the drop-down list and click on View Checklist. The checklist has six sheets. General information, water supply, sewerage and drainage, solid waste management, ERI and reliability. In each sheet, the data to be filled is organized into sections. As we can see, each data element to be answered has a unit and previous year's data for reference. The white cells are for data entry, while the yellow cells indicate the data which is auto-calculated or auto-filled by the system. If a city is filling data for the first time, then the previous year's data will not appear. Once data reporting for a particular section is complete, we can click on Save at the end of the section. It is advisable to save after to each section to ensure that data is not lost due to connectivity issues. We can click on Save All to save all the edited data in the sheet. The portal has three types of built-in checks to highlight any errors in the entered values. First, while reporting data, line by line in a section, pop-up messages are generated on entering unacceptable values. These need to be corrected to proceed further. Second, pop-up messages are generated while entering data but it does not prevent submitting the section. In cases where the incorrect looking value is justified, we can write the justification of the value in the remarks box that is available after each section. Third, after reporting all data in a section, when we click on validation, warning messages appear to highlight incorrect data. These messages have to be rectified to be able to submit the respective section. Reset button allows to erase all data for the particular section. Once we have finalized and saved the data for all the six sheets, we click on Submit. After the sheet is submitted, the data cannot be edited. Therefore, it is necessary to make sure the data is correct and verified to the extent possible before submitting. The sheets should be submitted in the same order from general information to reliability. Now, we will delve into data reporting for each of the sheets, beginning with the first sheet on general information. The general information sheet has data elements for demographics and information of service providers for each of the service sectors. Let us provide data in the white cells now. The portal then generates final performance indicators based on this data. Upon filling the data, click on Update to update the latest entered data for this section.
Next, we can click on validation to check if there are any errors in the values entered. As we can see, the portal is displaying a warning message at the top of the screen. It says, current year households and properties cannot be the same. We need to update the data entered against the questions on households and properties. Click on OK to see the next error. To correct the data, let's click on Update and correct the entered value. Immediately after correcting, click on the Update button of this section and then move on to the next section to correct the data of that section if necessary. Otherwise, the data entered in this section will not be saved. Once we have resolved the errors identified by the portal, we can click on Save All button. Next we move to the water supply sheet. The water supply sheet has data elements on nine indicators, that is coverage, per capita water supply, non-revenue water, metering, continuity of supply, complaint redressal, quality of water supply, cost recovery, and water charges collection efficiency. Having entered the values, let us click on the validation button and rectify the incorrect data if any. As we can see on the top, a dialog box has appeared with a message. Total households served cannot be more than number of households present here in the city. We see that the value we have entered against total households served, which is summation of households served by domestic and bulk water supplies, does not correspond with the value of total number of households in the previous section on general information. We need to recheck data under respective lines and enter correct values. After rectifying the errors, save all the changes by clicking on Save All. Next sheet is on Sewerage and Drainage. It has data elements on nine indicators. Toilet coverage, sewage coverage, sewage collection efficiency, sewage treatment capacity, extent of reuse and recycle of sewage, quality of treatment, complaint redressal, cost recovery, sewage charge collection efficiency, and two indicators on storm water drainage, on drainage coverage and water logging. Now we will enter the data required in the sheet. As we can see, a pop-up message is generated by the portal. It says, in case of ODF city, the number of properties with access to toilets should be equal to number of properties. Please make sure that the value entered here should not be more than total properties in the city. And if the city is ODF, then value entered here should be equal to number of properties in the city. Please note, if the city does not have a sewage network, then properties with sewer connections should be reported as zero and the remaining questions on sewerage system will not be applicable. They will be filled automatically by the system as NA. SLB indicators focus on underground sewerage systems and neglect the performance assessment of more widely prevalent on-site sanitation systems. Hence, CWAS has developed a new set of indicators called SAN benchmarks to capture the ground realities of on-site sanitation systems along with sewerage system. Cities can view these SAN benchmarks in the downloaded checklist. Having entered the values, let us click on the validation button and rectify the incorrect data if any. After rectifying the errors, we will click on save all to save the changes. The next sheet is on solid waste management. It has data elements on eight indicators, coverage, collection, segregation, solid waste recovery, scientific disposal, complaint redressal, cost recovery, SWM charge collection efficiency. In the first section, we have to enter values of waste collection by type of establishment like households and other establishments. If type wise data is not available, then we enter the total value of waste collection through the door-to-door -door service. We do the same for the next section on waste generation. Please note, the total waste received at processing or disposal facility and recycled should be equal to total quantity of waste collected and transported to disposal site. And these two data elements should not be more than total waste generated. Next, quantity of waste arriving at processing or disposal facility in segregated manner 
total waste quantity input at all types of processing facilities. Quantity of waste disposed in compliant landfill sites. Quantity of waste disposed in open dump sites should not be more than total quantity of waste collected and transported to disposal site. Having entered the values, let us click on the validation button and rectify the incorrect data, if any. As we can see, the warning message says, Total waste input for processing cannot be more than the total quantity of waste collected and transported. Here the value entered in total waste quantity input at all types of processing facilities is more than the total quantity of waste collected and transported to disposal site. So the value should be corrected such that it will be lower than the total quantity of waste collected and transported to disposal site. Save the data entered by clicking on save all. The next sheet is ERI or equity related information. The first section covers details of service delivery in slum settlements. Further sections capture information of the details of infrastructure for water supply, sewerage and on-site sanitation, solid waste management and financial details. Having filled the data, let's click on validation to check for errors if any. The warning message says some of toilets connected to sewer net Network, septic tanks, single pit, twin pit, other safe and unsafe system should equal to total number of individual toilets in the city. We have to recheck and enter the correct values. Click on OK to see the next error. Own tax revenue income cannot be less than collection of water supply, wastewater, SWM related charges and property tax. Tax revenue income cannot be less than revenue collection for the various services. The value entered in own tax revenue income should be summation of collected areas and demand of all the taxes city has levied that is property tax, water tax, sanitation or toilet tax, solid waste tax, light tax, etc. So the value entered here should be greater than summation of these. Similarly, the value of the total revenue expenditure of ULBs cannot be less than the value of operating expenditure on water supply, wastewater and SWM services. Click on OK to see the next error. After rectifying the errors, we will click on Save All to save the changes. Let's enter data in the reliability sheet that collects information on data sources. It has 11 subsections to capture the level of reliability of the information sources for different indicators. The reliability of the indicator is decided based on the source of the data and the record keeping mechanism of the data. As per the sources of the data, a response can be marked as either yes no, ND which is no data and NA which is not applicable. Based on the options selected by the city, the reliability of all the 28 service level benchmarks will be calculated from A as a highest reliability grade to D as a lowest reliability grade. A city can see their reliability grading in the reliability grade section of each sheet in the downloaded checklist or in the indicator report. The next step is target set it allows the cities to set targets for themselves for service delivery improvements in the four sectors water supply, wastewater, solid waste management and storm water drainage. The target set should be realistic and in alignment with the ongoing capital projects, budget allocation and priorities of the city in the upcoming year. To go to the target setting sheet, click on Go back to data entry and click on Target setting. Select the financial year for which the targets need to be entered. Click on Get target setting button. We now see the key performance indicators for the four sectors. With the use of data of the previous year and previous targets available as reference, we can fill in the targeted values for the upcoming financial year. The targets of all the indicators should be higher or equal to the current indicator values, except the target for non-revenue water and water logging indicators. The target sheet also has validation rules that will guide the cities to set the appropriate target values. 
If the city enters an incorrect target value, a pop-up message will appear on the screen to guide them. To edit the value, we click on Update button and save the data by clicking on the Update button of the particular section. We can also download the sheet in an Excel or PDF format by clicking on the respective buttons. We can also download the indicator report in PDF. This report has to be approved by the Chief Officer or the Municipal Commissioner of the ULB. In case of any changes, we will go back to respective sheets and make the required changes by clicking on the Update button. Once the Chief Officer approves the indicator values of the city, we submit each sheet one by one in the same sequence only. We will only be able to submit the sheet if all the validation errors are resolved. Once submitted, the data cannot be edited in any of the sections. Then we will submit the target sheet. We have generated 28 service level benchmarks, 5 SAN benchmarks and 100 plus local action indicators. Local action indicators help to better understand the results of the SLBs and suggest local actions for improvement. Cities can see LAIs at the end of each sheet. These performance indicators have been categorized under five themes – access and coverage, service levels and quality, financial sustainability, efficiency in service operations, and equity-related aspects. To facilitate the use of performance indicators, various online dashboards have been generated at the state and city levels. It also allows to compare the performance of cities class-wise or district-wise. CWAS has designed and developed various interactive dashboards to navigate the trends of state performance to city performance results quickly. These dashboards allow drilling down from indicators and charts and maps to read the data better. Assessment reports are also prepared and uploaded here. Performance assessment reports provide an overview of water supply, wastewater management, solid waste management and storm water drainage sectors service levels. For queries related to data reporting through the portal, write to cwas at cept.ac.in or contact at this number. For more information on validation rules, see the guidelines on the online tool for pass SLB checklist and target setting.